Let's now have a look at Mendel's monohybrid cross. So in the last video, I have discussed already the concept of heredity and how Mendel performed his experiments, on what basis he performed his experiments, and also a general overview of how phenotypes and genotypes are formed. Now we're going to discuss monohybrid cross. And as I've discussed before, monohybrid cross is basically a cross between cross between two organisms two organisms where one pair of contrasting characteristics pair of contrasting characteristics is studied so we're studying only one characteristic one characteristic which is different between them right we are basically focusing on that one characteristic that's why we call it monohybrid Mono means one, so monohybrid cross. So, what did Mendel do in his monohybrid cross? Let's have a look. He took two pea plants, right? He first took two pea plants. So, there was the first step, right? What did he do? He took two pea plants. One pea plant had, one pea plant was tall, okay, and the other pea plant was short. He considered height. So in his monohybrid cross, he considered height as the factor, right? Height. So he took two pea plants. One was tall and the other was short. The tall plant had an allelic combination of capital T and capital T. Allelic combination of capital T and capital T. As I told you, height can have two allelic forms. It can have capital T, which will be for tallness, and small t, which will be for shortness. So you took capital T and capital T together. And this is what we call a homozygous condition. What do we call it? Homozygous condition. Why is it homozygous? Because both alleles are of the same type. Here, capital T and capital T. It is called homozygous. Homo means same. So, homozygous, same zygotic condition, right? Same allelic forms are present in the genotype. So, capital T, capital T. And shortness, it had an allelic pair of small t, small t. Okay? Small t, small t. Okay? And he crossed them, right? So, he crossed them. Now, obviously, when the gametes took place, as I told you, each gamete gets only one allele. It does not get a pair. It gets only half the number of chromosomes, if you remember. So, it gets only one allele. So, it had a gamete with, an, with this allele, capital T. So, this tall plant produced gametes which had capital T allele. And the short plant again produced gametes which had small t allele only. Right? So these were the gametes. These were the gametes. Now these two were, were then crossed. Okay, so then finally we crossed these two. And in the progeny, we had a complete restoration of all the genes. And an allelic pair of capital T, small t was seen. Right? And this capital T, small t was seen to have a tall phenotype. It was seen to have a tall phenotype. Although it still had the allele for shortness. But it was seen that the phenotype was tall. Because that capital T dominated the small t. Okay, so this was what he did first. Here he took two plants which were called the P generation. P generation and P generation is basically what? Parental generation. P stands for parental. So parental generation, the parental generation was crossed and it produced a, a progeny and this was called the F1 generation.
okay f1 generation where this f stands for filial okay so this was what happened first right this was the first step of his monohybrid cross i hope this is absolutely clear if there is any doubt please let me know he took two plants one tall and one short both with homozygous allelic pairs capital t capital t and small t small t when their gamete formation took place during meiosis capital t allele was present in each gamete of the tall plant and small t allele was present in each gamete of the short plant these two were crossed and when their progeny had a restored number of chromosomes it was seen that its allelic pair was capital t small t this was the genotype of the progeny and the phenotype came to be tall right all plants came out to be tall any doubt whatever plants were produced were tall now it was seen that since even though that small t allele was present the capital t allele was expressed whereas the small t allele was suppressed it was not expressed right so this was the first step of his monohybrid cross with height now let's look at the second step in the second step mendel took two plants from the f1 generation so he took two plants with this genotype obviously all were tall but the genotypes this time were different and this capital t and then he crossed it with another one with capital t small t right he again crossed them so these were all of the f1 generation right now this is the f1 generation he's crossing them now he took two plants from the f1 generation and then he crossed them so now let's have a look at the gamete formation in each of the gametes now if you see it the gamete can have a capital T allele also and the small t allele also, right? So half the gametes will have capital T allele and half the gametes will have small t allele. So during gamete formation, it can either give capital T allele to a gamete or it can give small t allele to a gamete. Okay, similar case with this one. A capital T allele with the gamete or a small t allele with the gamete right so these were the gamete gametes produced okay these were the gametes right so now how could they have reproduced right let's have a look now let us draw a square a kind of square right so if i draw the square Let's draw a kind of square. Now these are the gametes. Okay, these are the gametes. Now for the first plant, it is giving capital T as well as small t like this. And then here also it is giving capital T and small t. Now you can write it here. This is plant one. And this is plant two right so plant one and plant two so these are the gametes which are seen and now what are the possible combinations in the progeny what can be the possible combinations right now this kind of square is called a punnett square punnett square and it is called punnett square named after uh, j punnett george j punnett who was the first scientist who used this square to determine genetic constitution of the progeny so he took like this, okay, and now let's see what are the possible progeny allelic pairs, right? What are the possible pairs that can be seen in the progeny? Again, if we have capital T and capital T in the two gametes, then we will get what? We will get capital T, capital T, right? Then if we have capital T, small t, then we can have this kind of allelic pair. If we have small t and capital T, again, you can have this kind of allelic pair. And if you have small t, small t, you will have this kind of allelic pair right so these are the genotypes of the f2 generation genotypes of the f2 generation now when Mendel crossed these f1 generation plants in his second step what did he observe in the f2 generation he saw that 75 percent of the plants in f2 generation now let's consider this as f2 generation in f2 generation 
75 percent of the plants were tall 75 percent of plants were tall and 25 percent plants were short okay so 25 percent plants were short 75 percent were tall 25 percent were short so here you can see there are and so you can say that the phenotypic ratio phenotypic ratio of tall to short right was 3 is to 1 right this was the phenotypic ratio for tall is to short right so what can you say here you can say for any three tall plants there was only one short plant so this was the phenotypic ratio so therefore what can you conclude here this small t small t gave a short plant right out of four this gave a short plant while all other three capital t capital t capital t small t and capital t small t gave tall plants they gave tall plants so you can say that only small t small t gave a short plant but capital t small t capital t capital t both gave tall plants right so mendel finally concluded that in a genotypic ratio that the genotypic ratio that is the ratio of the genotypes okay the genotypic ratio was 1 is to 2 is to 1 where this is capital T capital T is to capital T small t is to small t small t and what did Mendel finally conclude Mendel finally concluded that the shortness trait which was not expressed in f1 generation the shortness trait which was not expressed in f1 generation was then finally re-expressed in f2 generation it was finally re-expressed in the f2 generation so what did he finally conclude he also looked into the alleles right and during that time mendel called alleles factors he called them factors not alleles the term allele had not been coined then he called them factors so he saw that even if one capital t factor was present only if one capital t allele was present then two the plant would be tall right and only if there is a homozygous condition of small t in the in the genotype then only will the plant be short otherwise it will be tall only even if there is only one capital t present hence he concluded that capital t was a dominant allele dominant allele whereas small t was a recessive allele okay that means this dominant allele expressed itself in homozygous condition that is both are same alleles or even heterozygous condition heterozygous is where they are different alleles Right, you can say now this is a heterozygous condition. Capital T and small t, two different alleles. Still, it is expressing a tall phenotype. Still, this capital T is suppressing the small t. Similarly, in recessive allele, it is expressed only in a homozygous condition. Only in homozygous condition. Heterozygous, it will get suppressed. Right, for example, you can see here small t small t homozygous recessive condition right so this was mendel's mono hybrid cross where he came up with the idea of dominant and recessive alleles and finally he formulated his law of dominance law of dominance where he stated that the in the 
in the presence of a heterozygous condition of a heterozygous allelic condition of a heterozygous condition in the presence of a heterozygous condition the dominant allele the dominant allele shall gets expressed shall get expressed whereas the recessive allele shall get suppressed now this might seem obvious to you it's because we know this concept but that time mendel discovered this concept and that was phenomenal right so this was mendel's first law of inheritance law of dominance which stated that in the presence of a heterozygous condition the dominant allele shall get shall get expressed whereas the recessive allele shall get suppressed and this was what we called mendel's mono hybrid cross with full explanation observations as well as the procedure thank you very much for joining me goodbye and in the next video we'll be discussing the tie hybrid cross